Hello, it's John again from the Christian Century, and I'm joined today by Abram Kielsmeyer Jones, who has recently written a review for us of R.L. Stoller's The Kingdom of Children. So we're going to be talking about that book and child liberation theology. And uh, before we do all that, hello, Abram. Why don't you tell our viewers a little bit more about yourself? Hey, John. Yeah, great. And thanks so much for having me. Thanks for everyone who's here watching uh, my name is Abram. I um, pastor a church in Boston called South End Neighborhood Church. It's a small, diverse church, diverse in every way, socioeconomically, racially, personality. Uh, I am married to Sarah. We have three kids of our own, 16, 13, and 11. Uh, we've got a Black Lab Rescue as well. So uh, love to run, love to read, love to uh, play music, and uh, glad to be here today with you, John. Very cool. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Um, so your review, you start off with, I think, a really cool story where you went into your daughter's elementary school to preach, but you were really blown away by a scripture reading that was done by one of the second graders. I wondered if you could just tell us a little bit more about that experience and why it had such a big impact on you. Yeah, so they this school is really good about getting children involved in the chapel service. The school, there's a preschool, but then this is the, the K through six. Uh, part of the school where the chapel was. Um, so I was not surprised that a child was reading. Um, and in the rehearsals, I mentioned this in the review, but she was a little bit nervous, it seemed. And, you know, was, I sort of had that vicarious, like worrying for her, a little bit nervous for her. I didn't know her, so there was nothing I could do but watch. Um, but by the time she got up and read the scripture in the service, I mean, she just commanded the attention of that room. And I think some of that was the Holy Spirit reading through her. I, I just had this feeling of like, this is how this scripture is supposed to be inhabited, not just in this moment, but maybe even in general, like maybe it was always meant to be read this way by a child ministering powerfully to us. And so I'm, I'm having this really wonderful, powerful experience. I'm also starting to get a little bit teary and I'm about to go up and, you know, I was thinking about the passage. I was also thinking about if the technology would work because I had this great, uh, is it Taylor Swift or a Bible verse uh, PowerPoint game that we were going to play. And so all this stuff is running through my head and I was just completely caught off guard. Um, I shouldn't have been, but but I was by the the power that was in this reading, which I think was in part this child and then also just the way that the spirit was reading through her and just living out that text in a just uh, really compelling way. Oh, those are, those are fun details uh, to, to add to the, the story, um, to imagine you trying to start a Taylor Swift game while crying from the scripture reading that just took place. <laughs> um, okay. So, so in the book um, you say that um, the kind of one of the reasons that, that Stoller is writing this book is that there's a big gap in, in the theological work that's been done. Liberation theologies are tending to focus on adults only. Mm -hmm. There are some child the theologies out there, but they're not really liberation focused. So I was just mm -hmm. curious, why do you think this gap has existed for so long that, that Stoller's book is, is finally stepping into? I think that's a really good question. And I think as child liberation theology continues, I think that's probably a question that um, folks will have to reckon with. I mean, I, I think there's almost an indictment there of adults um, that that children haven't made their way explicitly into liberation theologies. Um, so I yeah, I wonder about that too. I, I wonder, you know, is this connected to that old adage of children should be seen but not heard? But turns out they they're not seen either. Um, you know, e even something as powerful and theoretically inclusive as liberation theologies, uh, it, even they can can miss people. They, they can miss a, a marginalized or, or oppressed group. And so I think that's happened with, with children for whatever reason. Um, I wonder too, you know, um, Stoller talks about liberation theologies as being theologies of self-determination. And so I wonder if part of this could be connected to either imagined or real limits of what children can do by way of self-determination. There may be some uh, thoughts around children's agency and, and what are they capable of, but also what's developmentally appropriate to expect of a child. I mean, I don't think any of us would want to say, well, that child is actually responsible to free themselves from the oppression and abuse that they're under. So there is a tension there. Um, but I think a lot of it is just that we don't, we adults just don't have children at the table in general. And, and I think that's 
something that child liberation theology is is looking to uh, address and uh, improve upon. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Um, well, so final question is is a big one, and it's that. Um, so I saw on your blog, which we will link to below in the video description. You talked about reading this book and you said that it instantly made your list of the top five books you've ever read. So mm-hmm. clearly this has had a big, a big influence on you. And I'm curious if you could just tell us a little bit about how this book has helped you. How has it changed your views? How has it changed the ways you approach your ministry? Just what has the impact of the book been? Yeah, and I'll, I'll answer. I mean, it, it's personal uh, how it's impacted me. So it's impacted my parenting, my ministry, just my own thinking about myself. Um, one of the, um, I'm going through a, a series of trainings right now that has to do with child development. And a phrase that they use is uh, small but significant change, small but significant change. So the idea is, here's this framework for child development that you can use that isn't supposed to be a brand new framework that revolutionizes everything and therefore it's going to be overwhelming until you won't actually adopt it. It's meant to be something that connects with what you already do. So I'm experiencing this book in that way, that this is a small but significant change for me. Small in the sense that uh, I, I can trace a through line the last 20 plus years through my ministry where children and youth have been front and center, whether that was as an actual youth minister or as a a pastor, lead pastor with a focus on children and youth. So in that sense, this isn't much of a change. It's more of a coalescing, realizing this has always been a huge part of my ministry. And and maybe in the last few years, you know, we have an older congregation and not as many kids. I I think I've kind of seen that drop off a little bit. Um, But my first vocational church ministry job was in youth ministry. And part of how I got there was at an internship program, watching a seventh grade kid minister to an elderly woman that I had completely overlooked. And I thought youth ministry is not just me ministering to youth. It's me ministering with youth and me being ministered to by youth. Um, So there's that uh, through line that has made, um, reading this book and its impact on me. And in a sense, it's it's kind of a small change or, or just sort of a, a bringing together of something that was already there. But it's also significant in the sense that now I'm really doubling down on that passion and that interest and realizing, you know, as I read through the Gospels, Jesus had a lot to say about children. Uh, unless you change, uh, you will never enter into the kingdom of God. Unless you change and become like a child, you'll never enter into the kingdom of God. And those are pretty powerful words. So part of this for me is asking, how can I make this significant change for me of becoming like a child, um, reading the Bible with children, seeing children, advocating for children. So I'm trying to do that from the place that I'm in as a pastor, uh, but also exploring new possible avenues where I might make that change. And and so the book has really just kind of helped me uh, frame all of that, both theoretically, theologically, and then also practical. Stoller's very practical. He Um, I mean, I think if you were to ask him, what is it that children need to be liberated from? He'd give you a beautiful multi-pronged answer toward the top of the list would be abuse and neglect. And so um, he talks about that, you know, how how do you work on abuse prevention and response? And I know that's something he's done work on with churches and organizations. So that's a part of it for me too. How can I, in my own church and in other spaces, promote child safeguarding, uh, including with my own kids? You know, how, how can I really... Uh, create spaces where they are who God has called them to be. Uh, They're not just who adults expect them to be. How can I listen to them, learn from them, advocate for them and and protect them uh, as their parent? Wow. Thank you. That your answer reminded me of, um, and I, and I, I'm very new to thinking about childhood liberation theology, but um, I, so many churches would also say they put children front and center but I just think about the ways it's so pragmatic or utilitarian. It's like a growth strategy for the church or like a survival mechanism, you know, like we need to reach the younger generation or we're not going to exist in in 30 years. And it's like, these are people who have agency and personhood and they're really valuable members of the church. I love your story about the young person ministering to the older, the older person. Yeah. Well, and along the lines of what you're saying, you know, 30 years from now kind of mentality that connects with this idea that youth are the future of the church, which I frankly find, I mean, it's, it's a well-meaning phrase that people say, I think it's a little 
denigrating to youth. I mean, youth are the present of the church. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not just something that they kind of work up to. And as you're saying, yeah, that preservation strategy. I mean, what, you know, Stoller talks about the here and now, the right here and right now of liberation theology and, and the right here and right now of children. Um, yeah, I think that's really important. Mm. Well, I'm sure there's many more we could say, but thank you so much, Abram, for chatting about this book and these themes. Um, anyone who missed the review, the link will be below to read Abram's review. There will also be a link where you can buy R.L. Stoller's book, and then also a link, as we said, to Abram's blog. Thank you so much for chatting today. My pleasure. Thanks so much, John.